Ready, check. All right. So, uh, as I've been, I've been walking around a lot outside more with summer and everything, and I've been listening to a lot more podcasts and and such. And I've been listening to Go Time a lot. I, I like Go Time. Good guy. Good people over there. And um, I don't. I've not, I haven't had a lot of time to, to listen to podcasts before, but now that I'm kind of trying to stay healthy and get my ten thousand steps and been walking around, but you're not here for that. What is up with Go? And I guess this is going to go into my new playlist called "I Told You So," <laughs> because I. I mean, I've been predicting that Go was going to be a number one pick by hackers since at least 2015. Uh, I started playing around with Go in 2014 when TJ Holowaychuk moved away, said farewell to Node, and uh, been coding in it ever since. So I code in it pretty regularly every day, every weekend. And I love it. It's, it's my beloved language. I love it. It, it. I love it because it gets stuff done. But more importantly, it's really efficient. It's got a great compiler. Uh, it's got a very unusual uh, binary footprint. And for all of those reasons, uh, I opened up my my alerts uh, for keyword searching and stuff today. Um and I was like listening to them all, and I was like, "This is insane." I mean, it's so insane. I have to make a video about it. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to show you all of it. So here's the first one. So this is ZDNet. These are all you know tech rags. So Chiching Gol uh, Golang Trojan used in attacks against U.S. schools. Uh, it's funny too because this just came in, but the I I mean I'd been hearing a lot about the earliest that I had seen it actually popping up uh, in like real use. There's like Black Hat Go which is uh, kind of funny, actually. Uh, there's a book out there that I have from No Starch Press that, that was a thing. Uh, I follow a guy on, on Twitter, too. I can't remember him offhand, but he oh, he's a hacker. He only codes in Go. It's his only thing. And these people still use Python for other things, but the reason they really like Go is it's not that much harder than Python, and it gets cross-compilation so they can write malware for a Windows machine on a Mac, they can bundle up C and C++ inside of it. In fact, this, this I'm kind of all over the place, but um, this uh, Go, where is it? Using Go in unusual ways. This was a podcast, uh, and one of the speakers was a presenter. Uh, I'm sorry if I get the names wrong. Um, so uh, Joaquin Kennedy is tracking Go and malware, and he talks, he doesn't talk a lot very much in this podcast, but when he does talk, he talks specifically about what they're doing is they're encapsulating. They're using Go because it's statically, you know, linked and everything, and they're rebundling uh, old hacks, ransomware, and other things, and they're giving it a new digital footprint. And then they're they're able to kind of like modulate the shields, you know, like randomize the shields, like attacking board or something. And so people can't identify it, so they're encapsulating it in this new in this new way, and it's kind of reading all sorts of havoc. In fact, in this particular blog, it said that there has been a right here, according to uh, Interzer, there is roughly a two thousand percent increase in Go-based malware sample over the past few years. So we already started to see this before. Uh, it's super easy to make malware code because it is statically linked because it is easy to write. I mean, wicked easy to write and fast to write and and to uh, wrap up C with because it's 100% C compatible um, for this kind of thing. And and then you know you can cross uh, cross you can whatever it has concurrency. And the other thing that they cited here was all of the like native standard library encryption stuff that's in there, like industry grade encryption. So you get, it's all the stuff that I really liked when I came to the language. I was like, well, I went to go do a GBG thing and it was already there. It was in the standard library. I mean, if, if you've done any, any kind of GPD coding, you know that you, for years, it was like you use lib GPG or you use the GPG binary and you wrapped it up in Python or Perl or whatever, like we all did, but it's all built in to go like at the end, the standard library. And not just that, like every other encryption level, uh, not to mention the high concurrency, the really great built-in web server. So, I mean, it is a hacker's dream because they get everything in that one little binary. And with Go 1.16, what else did they do? With Go 1.16, now you can embed payloads automatically. They made it even easier. So now you can put like actual files to put inside of there that that are, you know, using, using the embed. So I just want to report on this. Uh, I've been saying it forever. Uh, right now, if you're a hacker, you're picking Go as your language to write malware. 
And I'm not suggesting you write malware. What I'm suggesting is that you understand that that's what hackers are doing. And their techniques are changing. They're there. And for many of the malware packages, you know, they're not writing. They're, they're still using C and C++, but they're encapsulating it. And, and they're not picking the other languages. They're picking Go right now. And it's showing up all over the place. So this was a big one that was used as Trojan. Uh, he talks about another one. There was uh, Chichi was this one. Then there was... Uh, God, there was, there's another few that are, that are talked about in here. I'll let you go read about them. I, uh, oh, yeah. There's the Go Obfuscate for Obfuscation. Um, you know, wow, look at that. The FBI previously warned about the increase in, in PYSA attacks against both UK and US schools. Uh, yeah, and, and so here's some of the other ones. This, these all came in independently in my keyword search this week. This week. So, uh, and it's funny because I just had somebody on Twitter, uh, <laughs> Greg, <laughs> easy and profitable malware. Uh, I, I heard um, that somebody, somebody in my Twitter feed say, hey, I'm giving, he was a Rust person, he's like, I'm giving Go another look. And he's in security. And so I think a lot of security people were kind of turning their, this guy who gave this, this, this Go Lang Europe uh, talk, which is relatively recently, what was that? Uh, he, he has a lot to say about it. Um, and new ransomware highlights. This is the one we were showing before. Actually, I think this is a different one. This is, uh, crush strike secure to sample the new ransomware variant known as yet unnamed. I think this is the one that they ended up naming, uh, Chachi later. I don't know. These ransomware strains have been active since 2019, uh, attacking cyberpunk 277 <laughs> as well as enterprise organizations. So it seems like they've been, using functions like Hello Kitty and Five Hands with components written in C++, as well as the other way, the malware encrypts files and accepts command line arguments. Um, good stuff to read there. I, I, I found it super fascinating, so I thought I'd just do a little quick thing on it. Uh, here's another one on CyberWire. Um, I think these are complimentary articles. Uh, so, updates on Bizarre Call, uh, Golang, two virtual stores. This actually talks about, I think it's the same, it's just a different person reporting on the same thing. Uh, Microsoft is tracking an active Baza call campaign, CDNet reports. So yeah, it's the same people that are reporting about this one, about the vulnerabilities. Um, I think that's a different, no, that's a different one. That's a different one. I'm mixing them up. I didn't read this one as closely. But these all came in. This is the re main reason I'm doing this is because this just came in this week. Like all of these different ones are coming in. Uh, they're attacking, yeah, this is the same one. This is the the same, the same attack hitting, uh, uh, you know, this is the same one that ZDNet referred to. I wonder if that's the original article. I don't, I'm just trying to find different resource, different sources for all of this. I'll put these links in the show notes uh, on YouTube so you can go, you can go look them up if you want and read about it. But uh, if you're in security, you probably already know this. So this is, this is the reason I'm doing this video is not just to say I told you so. It's to tell people that if you, if you want to get into security, uh, Go is definitely one of the languages you should put at the top of your list um, because, I mean, it, particularly forensics and stuff like that, because the, the PhD was talking about uh, this, the forensics analysis. He was, he was, he was talking about how, how confused they all are <laughs> basically uh, because they can't figure out the internals. Uh, so Go's got, it's like throwing, a, it's not just throwing software for a loop, it's throwing some of the forensics people for a loop and, in order to not be thrown for a loop, you need to know not only how to code and go, but at the end of the day, you're probably going to need to have how the compiler works and go. And one of the greatest things about Go has always been as compiler. Uh, they they put an extra amount of effort into making sure it's the fastest compiler on earth, and it is. It's just it stands down the fastest. I mean, for you know a substantial language, and for that reason, there's a lot of optimizations that take place in there that make it very very difficult. Sounds like to to break apart in forensics. Um, this has got me super interested in, in go for cybersecurity all over again. Uh, I just I, th I just threw this one in here. This is another one that came in. Normally, when you see these like really cheap, I mean, you should ever you should take this with a grain of salt. Like the top languages, everybody should learn, right? Uh, and I just I thought that was silly. I thought for sure go wasn't even going to be there. It was going to be like on the bottom someplace, right? Because they never they never do. But once a, a language hits this level of like kind of dumb mainstream. <laughs> <laughs> then you at least know people know about it. So JavaScript, of course, is one. Python is two, and Go is number three. So, so there you go. Uh, Java is four. Well, I thought that was interesting, uh, probably because of Android. Still, I mean, it's still the biggest language for that. Uh, Kotlin, of course, for Android, and uh, P 
PHP, 50% of the web still runs on it. So yeah, it's still there. C Sharp, this is the Windows world and gaming. Uh, C++, and then that's it. <laughs> they didn't put anything else. I just thought that was funny. That's all I really wanted to say. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up this video now. But if you're going to get into forensics or you're going to get into cybersecurity or you're going to get into cloud native, Go is the language for cloud native. Uh, I, I mark my words. They're gonna, it's going to take them a long time to come around. But another prediction I made a long time back is that eventually, eventually, uh, the machine learning people are going to come around and they're going to let go eventually. Uh, it's going to take a very long time because they do not like to let go of their Python, just like most Python people. Python people really have a hard time leaving the language. Uh, I don't know what it is. I, I don't. I've just observed that over the last eight years. Uh, so, but, but I've already seen some really high-end like machine learning kind of people migrate away from Python for performance reasons. Um, and, and particularly now that they want to start putting their machine learning code into the cloud in some way. And so there's, you know, Python's kind of a pain in the butt to put in the cloud. Uh, it's easier nowadays than it would have been to, to just distribute it. So the other reasons to use Go out there besides just forensics, but that's another one. Yeah. Yeah. There's just so many libraries in Python. Uh, yeah. Greg, good point. The libraries in Python are phenomenal and the NumPy stuff, it's all C++ under the hood in there, but they don't care. And they're married to Python and a lot of them are, or scientific or their spreadsheet people, you know, they got one language on their belt. They probably will not be migrating as fast. It's, it's probably, I mean, it, you know, it's probably a pretty fair thing to say that the hackers would migrate faster <laughs> because when they see something that works, it's going to get them money. They're like on it. You know, it's not, it's not about having to retool or anything for them. Uh, I, I happen to think Python could be, I mean, Go could be a pretty pretty serious machine learning language, but it's going to take a long time for people to come around to that, at least the mainstream people. Um, that's all. That's all I had to say about that. Have a great night. Bye.